The analysis of all the data sets combined at absolutely Bedford. When I looked at 2006 data, absolutely Bedford. But this is the problem. From an academic point of view, I'm rather stuck. Because I have two data sets that have to do with accounting data. They follow Bedford's law very well. But for an academic paper, you actually amazingly, I'm sorry to say, need a research question. So you need to be able to say, what is this the answer to? <laughs> and if I can think of the question that that is the answer to, then this paper would be rather straightforward. It just needs an introduction and a conclusion at the end. But uh, with any research study, I need a research question, and I need the analysis, and I need a conclusion. You can't just go and publish the middle part. That's a little short. Well, we're almost done. The Da Vinci Code. I think so far has sold about 40 million copies. My book that I wrote sold about 3,000 copies. So I'm going to catch him, but it could be a while. It could just be a while, but that indeed is my goal. So the Da Vinci Code, rather well known. I can't wait to see the movie, Mark. I haven't seen the movie. No, it's, it's, it's right there. Yes. It's going to be on YouTube tonight. We should, we should make a movie. So let's have a look at the Da Vinci Code. Rather amazingly, in the book, The Da Vinci Code, there is a code. It's quite, quite amazing how you would find something like that in a book called The Da Vinci Code. Here we go. These are the first three lines of the code. 13.3.2.21.1185. O draconian devil, O lane saint. We'll stick with the numbers part of it. Does anybody recognize those numbers? I'll give you a clue, it's in code. <laughs> so it is recognizable, but with a little work. The mathematicians are about to give me an answer. A wonderful call. These are the Fibonacci numbers, but they are out of order. So we'll usually start with one and one. And then we go, one and one is? two, and then we take the previous two numbers. One and two is three. I remember I was giving a talk in Singapore at the Government Investment Corporation, a very serious institution in Singapore. It invests the surplus funds of the government of Singapore. I was giving a talk and the door was open. So we have 20 auditors on a Friday afternoon, and I'm at the stage, and I write down the Fibonacci numbers, and I write down one, one, and I'm gonna get the ball rolling, and I say, one and one is, and then they all say, two. And I said, I think we should close the door. If somebody walks past and they hear that the auditors are having a seminar, and they hear the question one and one, and they get the answer two, they might just spare the <laughs> auditors are in need of some rem remedial arithmetic. <laughs> so our door is closed here. One and one is two. Two and one is three. Three and two is five. And so you keep adding the previous two numbers. So. The Fibonacci sequence is in the Da Vinci Code. So our question indeed is, is there a code within the code? Is there a code that only we will know about today? Well, let's have a look. Is that code perhaps, just perhaps, Benford's Law? So let's have a look at the first 300 numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. How's that? And that indeed is simply the first 300 numbers. I spent time working with John Trono, and uh, you have to use the computer because these numbers get excessively big, and they get very big very fast. And so he was able to write a special program that looked at the first 100,000 numbers, and I thought we could stop at that stage. Absolutely perfect. And that tells us that indeed there is a code within the code, a code that only we know about. So next time you go to a party, take along the Da Vinci Code <laughs> and tell people that there is a code within this code, but only you know about it. It is really a attention grabber. <laughs> Could Bedford numbers be used to decipher certain I have reversing the process. Yes, and I have been asked questions, and I think uh, I have a long uh, uh, research stream ahead of me, 
some people have sent me uh, some questions saying that if some numbers are missing from a sequence, if my data set is, is missing a chunk of numbers, maybe Bedford's law could lead me in the direction of what those missing numbers might be. So there are, there are nice questions. We can move even beyond the Divincy code and start uh, figuring out what might be wrong and what might be right. And indeed, with the election results, uh, I would also expect election results to follow Benford's law because we saw the county populations follow Benford's law. And if your population numbers follow Benford's law, then the election results should. Because in an election, all you are doing is dividing the county population up into three groups. Voted for McCain, voted for the other candidate, didn't vote at all. And so you simply be dividing them each into three groups, and you should get Benford's law coming out of that. First two digits. <coughs> An absolutely perfect fit. And a few more things and then we're done. Uh, this is an example of a paper that I have jointly written by Frank Bedford's grandson and Frank Bedford himself. So they found this paper in the attic and so the grandson decided he will finish off the paper with Bedford himself. Uh, this is somebody sent me an image from a book. He said I bought this book at a flea market in Albany and I just looked up the name Frank Bedford to see whether it was a slightly famous person and I thought you'd be interested to know I have that book. I should write back to him and say I'll give you your 50 cents if you like. <laughs> Plus postage. So indeed, the message I do want to give to you is if you do get immersed into a piece of uh, research, then you have to go all in. It's like poker, I'm all in, and that's what I care about. The exciting things, I visited the family, I know them, I've had lunch with them, I've exchanged emails, and so on and so forth. But we had a question at the beginning. And so we have to end with the answer to that question. I know you can't remember the beginning <laughs> because of the Ozzy Osbourne effect, but let's see whether we can actually get there. So this was the second census. And so again, we'll see whether we've learned something after 45 uh, minutes. And I know we have spoken about the numbers in the Bible. Uh, these ones went down well. Other numbers did not go down so well. If you want to comment, you can. There's another set of numbers in the Bible which was not well received because the counts were done. What patterns do you see in the list of numbers? Dave. <laughs> it's uh, more with the first first digit is lower digit. Ah, the, uh, the f there are more million. There's there's none that you need from the world. Ah, no, the first digit of one. Also, that makes a uh, tremendous number of zeros. A tremendous number of zeros at the end. So, does the data follow Benford's law? No. Can I say something about it? I would say what we have is we have a case where the numbers have not had enough time to spread. All 12 tribes were formed at about the same time. They're growing at about the same rate. What would happen is once they double in size, all the larger ones here, when they double in size, they will have a first digit one. So reasonably soon we'll have six first digit ones, and we'll have eight first digit ones, then perhaps nine. So the ones that are coming, and when they come, they will hang around for quite a long time because they will need to double in size from 100,000 to 200,000 before they actually get rid of that one. So the data has all the attributes of something that should follow Bentham's law. If we took something like the 50 states in America, they started at different times and they are of different sizes, that data has more, more of a chance to follow Bentham's law within a quicker period of time. So I will say thank you very much. I've enjoyed today.